Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, and welcome back, everybody. It is one of those things that we truly take for granted. It is the foundation of our lives, essentially. And I'm talking about your feet. Your feet tell everything about you, whether you realize it or not. And part of that is reflexology and how, how your feet connect to the rest of the body. We're going to talk about that today and also how you can learn to be a reflexologist. She is the owner of Foot Ladies, which is a wonderful reflexology center in the area of San Diego, La Mesa specifically. Bobby Warren joins us here on the program. Hey, Bobby, how you doing? I'm doing terrifically. Thank you so much and I appreciate you inviting me on. Oh, I'm looking forward to learning more. Of course, we've heard about the term reflexology and how touching the foot connects with other parts of your body. I'm loosely explaining it. Can we go into more detail exactly what it is? Uh, Well, we're still figuring that out. But yes, theoretically, there are reflexes in the feet that correspond to every part of our body. And uh, there was a recent research project that was done at the University of Minnesota where we actually did work on the feet while someone was in an fMRA um, excuse me, the um, yeah, the MRIs, the, the functional MRIs. And it was amazing how it lit, where it lit up in the brain, and it basically was a proof of function for us, a proof, proof of concept. And, yeah, it lights up in areas relating to the different parts of the body. So in, in the basic underlying principle of it is while you're re- working with the feet, it helps the body to relax in a deep, deep level. And that's basically what's happening. Uh, amazing with the MRI, seeing the brain change just by literally touching somebody's feet. Literally touching their feet as an instantaneous response in the brain. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's been around for centuries, goes back to Asian medicine, correct? No. Oh, it doesn't? <laughs> no. <laughs> misconception. Okay. Misconception. Yep. One of the misconceptions we found a, or one of our, one of my friends found a painting when he went to visit um, in Cairo, in Egypt. He found a, 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 a papyrus showing the people of one of the paintings or drawings done on an Egyptian tomb, and it shows them working on hands and feet. Well, they brought that back here to the States back in the 70s, and we were all excited about it, late, late 70s, early 80s. We were all excited about it, and it, um, but it's only one of seven medical papyruses or paintings on the wall, and it could have been manicure, panicure, excuse me, manicures and pedicures for all we know. But that's what sort of started that conception, a misconception of it was reflexology, and that's where it came from. When in actuality, it was developed by a physiotherapist in the United States by the name of Eunice Ingham back in the early 30s. So that's where we can trace it to, and her, her background can be can traced back to a, a uh, ear, nose, and throat specialist, a doctor in New England that she worked with. And so there's some research that he did and another, another friend of his, and Eunice took this information and ran with it and literally called it, well, she called it compression massage when she first started out and then realized that that, that really did not work and it actually put us into a category that we didn't want to be in. And so she called, started calling it reflexology, basically touching reflexes in the feet, which correspond to the different parts of the body. How did it connect to... Asian cultures. Why? Why do we believe that? I. The only thing I can think of is because of that that painting, that wow. drawing that came in the Egyptian print. Um, we know that that Eunice's um, uh, the, the the people that she studied under um, had been to Europe for tr- for training in other things. He was an eye, ear, nose, and throat specialist back in the twenties and thirties, and he picked up a theory in Europe. Now he didn't. It wasn't. He didn't say it was acupuncture. Didn't say it was acupressure. Nothing. It's just the theory was that there were zones in the body and they corresponded to um, different parts of the body. Uh, so it was zones rather than um, acupuncture points. We don't work with energy meridians. It's a, a whole different relaxation model. Model. Interesting. Because I was just going to ask you: Is it based on what you were just saying? That is it somewhat similar to acupuncture, but it's different meridians. That's what I'm getting. That, well, I remember my boss, Mr. Byers, Dwight Byers, who was Eunice Ingham's nephew, she used to explain it that um, 
Oh, what is it he said? Um, no, that he's, he, he would say, in order, in order for us to kind of understand, so it's sort of like acupressure. That, again, started a whole bunch of myths that it was like acupuncture and there were points on the feet just like acupuncture. That, that totally confused people. And it was only that the fact that you pressed or you put a needle in here, one spot, and it reacted somewhere else in the body. That was the only comparison that he was trying to show. But otherwise, we work with nerve pathways as opposed to energy pathways. So is it true that the foot is connected to pretty much every organ in the body? Well, the foot isn't, but there are reflexes. And in my brain, <clears throat> the way I explain this to myself is that every single body, we all are made up of, of cells, and every cell has your genetic blueprint in it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do cloning. And so because every cell has a blueprint of the body, to me it made sense. Well, there's a blueprint in your eyes called iridology. There's a blueprint on your feet. There's a blueprint on your hands. For people who do colonics, there's a blueprint of the body on the colon. So it, the body is reiterated or, or um, shown up again and again and again all over the body. It's amazing how we are designed. Oh, my gosh. Bobby, even in the last couple of months, I'm, I'm learning more and more that Everything we experience gets into the cellular level. The stress that we go through, the call them the traumas from our past, it's sitting in our cells, whether we know it or not. Yes, absolutely. Our thoughts, our thoughts affect everything in our body. Yep. Um, because thoughts are energy, uh, and um, our entire body is energy. So, yeah, we are working with energy. It's just that we're not working on the same level or type of energy um, specifically that acupuncture or acupressure would be. Can you walk us through a, a reflexology treatment, how that actually works? Well, <clears throat> I have a, a, tech, a, a, a protocol that I use. Every therapist is going to have their own protocol so that I don't forget any of the areas that I'm working on. And each session is about 45 minutes. Uh, that really seems that last 15 minutes. A lot of people will try to do half-hour sessions, half-hour sessions. That's good all in, uh, in itself, but 45 minutes, for some reason, that extra 15 minutes just really starts kicking in with the body. And so I work from the top of the foot, on the, on the toes, all the way down to the heel, the, on the bottom of the foot. All or, every square inch is worked on the foot. And what we're looking for are areas that are sensitive. And there can be degrees of sensitivity, everything from, ooh, that kind of feels good, to... <laughs> so, you know, we're, gonna, we're trying to find those sore, sore places tell us that there is an imbalance in that corresponding part of the body once we have eliminated actual foot issues. What is actually the intent? Somebody goes to you for a treatment. Are they describing, hey, you know, I've got um, digestion issues or I've got pain in my back, whatever it is. Or do you just, you just jump in, you work on the foot, you address just about everything, and then if something needs to get, uh, for lack of a better description, fixed, it just <laughs> takes care of itself. Well, everybody comes in with their own story, and I have some that come in every other week, and it's sort of like a, a, a touch-up, a, a tune-up, I guess you could say. Uh, I have one lady now who's recovering from his hip surgery. So the first, first few days uh, afterwards, I actually went to her and worked on her because trying to walk upstairs is not so easy when you've had your hip replaced. So uh, I was working on her once a week, and it really did help her to recover a lot more quickly. There's also um, things that can happen within your own family. Uh, you want me to tell you the most amazing result I got one time? I was going to ask you for some uh, success stories, please. Okay. Well, one of them was I got a uh, very quickly got a call from my dad one day, and he said, your mom's not feeling well. Can you come over? So I drove over to their house, which was a mile away from me, and my mom was in the middle of having a stroke. So I immediately said, sit down, and her head was hurting on the left side. So I went to the left foot. That was my first clue, because the left foot relates to the left side of the body and the right foot to the right side of the body. The toes relate to the head. So I went immediately to the toe that related to the area where she was feeling the pain. And within seconds, she started, the pain started subsiding, and actually she started getting color back on her face. 
And so I said, get up. We're going to go to the hospital and check on this. She gets up and she goes, uh-oh. She starts to get dizzy. I said, my dad, he had a life alert button and he pressed that. And we got the EMTs there, part of the hospital. And um, I, she continued to have the pain in her head, which as long as I was working on her feet, it would calm down and the pain would, would subside. And she would not exhibit the symptoms of a stroke. So um, once they got her settled in, it was about four days later, not settled in, but kind of settled everything down, um, they said to send her home. Well, I picked her up. We were going to go have lunch. We got to where we were going to go. We got out of the car, she took four steps, and threw up on the ground and said, oh, my head is starting to pound again. So we jumped in the car, running back to the hospital. Uh, we went in the emergency room, and I asked the doctors for doctor, and, and the neurologist were standing right there. And I said, Please tell me where. Where? And as on we were on the way down to the hospital. My mom said, "I can't see. Oh my gosh, my eyes. This, my eyesight has gone down to all I can see. This is like through a little pinprick." And she was terrified. So we, that's, I pushed the gas even faster. Got down there, told the doctor what was happening, and I said, "I can't remember where in the brain this is happening." Well, it's in the in the twelve cranial nerves that we work on for the eyes and the ears, and so. I worked on those areas, and I searched around the big toe, right where the uh, occipital, not occipital, but the atlas and axis, the very top of the, brain, of the spine is located, the reflexes for that. And I pressed on it, and I pressed on another area, and all of a sudden it, it went in like, a, it was like I was popping a packing bubble. And it went pop, and my mom went, ah, I can see. I mean, it was bam, just like that. Her eyesight came back, and it was just, we all stood there and stared at her, and they asked me what happened, and all I could think of was Rice Krispie, Rice Krispie, because that's what it felt like. I was pressing right under the, uh, the big toe, the toenail, and it, cr it crackled, and her eyesight came back. That was the most dramatic one I've ever had. But I've brought people out of seizures in our classes where they go into epileptic seizures, and there's a technique that we learn that can bring them out of a seizure very quickly. I've had it happen on several cruises where I've had to help somebody with a seizure. Um, it can break a fever, a really, really high fever with this one particular technique. Um, oh, my gosh, I've got 40 years of stories um, for you. Bobby, right Bobby, Bobby, my head is spinning right now. I'm in awe of this, and I have chills. I, I'm wow. serious. This has taken it to a all-new level of appreciation for Good. reflexology. Good. Good. Wow. Yeah. Um, in your mother's situation, when she first went to the hospital, then they subsequently released her, did they diagnose a, a stroke? Was it actually diagnosed at that time? Uh, they diagnosed it as a TIA. Which stands uh, for? TIA, oh, excuse me, transitomic attack. It's a brain fart. That's <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line. Um, and a lot of people get those pre-strokes. Uh, but she, her whole face shifted. Her face, half of her face went down. It was numb. Everything was screaming stroke. Um, but by the time we got there, everything had calmed down so much, and I'd worked on her enough to where it only came up as a minor blip. Wow. Unbelievable. How, yeah. did, how did you get involved with all of this? <laughs> my mom. My mom, uh, my mom was, kind of, was kind of different. I grew up with a mom who taught Hatha yoga in the living room of her house. She also teach, taught uh, Transcendental Meditation, she and my younger brother, and they had me meditating at the age of 16. And so she was interested in a lot of these different things, and she learned about this reflexology from a nurse who had also taken the teacher, yoga teacher training classes with her. And she decided she wanted to take class with me because I wasn't interested in all of her other stuff. And so she said, I'll pay for it if you go. Okay, why not? So we went to a class in Los Angeles, January of 1979, and I walked into this ballroom at the Hilton, and it was full. I mean, there were hundreds of people there. And they were all late older, like 50s, 60s, 70s. I was probably one of the youngest people in the room. And so we went to the class, and it was fun. It was interesting, and I didn't believe it until I actually worked on a friend and got rid of her stomach ache <laughs> so that we could go out that night. And... We just continued to keep going to classes and going to classes, and finally it was because of this really cute guy in my church that found out that I was taking the training, and he wanted to trade with me. 
well, I, I didn't know if I really knew what I was doing. I'd only been to 13 seminars. I'm being facetious here. <laughs> and so I called my mom and said, we got to get certified because David Brown wants to trade with me. And she's like, o- okay. <laughs> so that is the only reason I got certified. The day that I got certified, my score, because I'd been there 13 times, I aced it. I, I par- barely uh, missed anything. And so the guy that was the teacher at the time, he took me to talk to Mr. Byers and said, this young gal w- I think would be a great teacher. And I'm standing there going, what, what? So they invited me to come on board and train me as an instructor. And that happened. So I got certified in 1982. And I went, I think, 84 or 85 is when I went on board with them in the Institute, which allowed me to travel all over the world doing seminars. And that's how it all happened. Wow. Um, It's amazing how much background of the body that you have with reflexology. Uh, Did Mm -hmm. you you always have an interest in the body? (laughs) Not at all. Wow. Absolutely nothing at all. It just, I was so totally guided to this. And I found it so interesting. Are you kidding? I, th- I think I did not do too well in biology. <laughs> I don't think I did well at all. And, but it was so fascinating. There was, the first little book that they had us read was called I Am Joe's Body, which was written, um, or actually published by Re- uh, Reader's Digest many, many, many decades ago. And it, it's, I can find it online, I Am Joe's Body. I think every child should read that book because it is written in eighth grade English very understandable, and I thought it was a great start for people to kind of start reading about the body. And then you start going into more college-level um, textbooks and things like that, learning more and more. But that's, um, yeah, I had, to, I had to go back to, back to school and take a lot more anatomy classes. I also took a lot of uh, public speaking course. I went and joined Toastmasters. There were things that I had to do in order to continue working for them. Who is... A perfect candidate for reflexology, and and why? Or should we all be doing it? I think everybody should do it. I think just I've had so many people take classes just to learn how to do it for their family and friends. And something you can't really pick up in a book. Uh, my mom got Eunice Ingham's books back in the seventies, actually in the sixties, and that's where she brought home to my mom. So I was like sixteen years old when I was first introduced to this but it wasn't until I was 20, 28 that I actually took classes. But uh, I, I, if anybody, everybody took this, they came away with just something that could save someone's life. The one technique that we use on the big toe, like I said, can break seizures, can break a, a, a high temperature, can, um, there's just there's so many things that if all they, just learn not, one guy came because his wife kept having menstrual cramps and he wanted to help her. Well, that's it. He was so excited to learn what he could do to help her with the, with the, with the pain. Wow. Amazing. So, yeah. um, can somebody else without treatment, or without, without training, support somebody else? For example, let's say you give somebody a foot massage. Who doesn't love a foot massage? And if you're looking at a reflexology chart, can you at least administer some kind of Maybe relief or comfort. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Even if you don't know what you're doing. Like I tell my students, you take one class and you feel like, well, I don't know if I'm doing what Should I even touch their foot? Yes, you can do some good. We've shown that just massaging the feet, not reflexing the feet, because it's a totally different technique. But either, even if you just rub the feet, the blood pressure is going to lower. And it, you don't get physiological changes in the body by massaging. There is definitely a deeper work there a deeper stimulation, but it's, um, my mother, like I said, she just read the books and was practicing or playing with it with my brother, and he was, uh, he, she was able to fix it to the point where he did not have to have ear surgery. That's wow. a whole different story. <clears throat> so, yeah, even if you don't know what you're doing, you, can't, you cannot hurt anybody. That's the thing I love about it. There are no contraindications for reflexology. None. None. And just that's amazing. Another myth. Completely yeah. amazing. Um, when you do the training, is it that you're, you're learning how to pinpoint each individual area on the foot that corresponds to a part in the body? Yes, yes, okay. yes. There are about 17 or 18 techniques that we learn that address body mechanics because it's really important if you want to sit here and do this work sitting in front of somebody for eight hours a day 
you've got to be able to have good body mechanics so you end up not being a mess, the person, the practitioner. So uh, now, what do you yeah, mean? What do you mean by Bobby by being a mess? Well, for example, um, because of the power and the work that we do with our hands, your okay. shoulders and arms can become very, very tight, and a practitioner can develop carpal tunnel if they're not careful. Sure. So those are a lot of things we address in every class. We watch how people are holding the foot and how they're working with their hands, so that they down the road won't develop that. I often wonder how massage therapists do their job every day. You know, like just like you said, they're using their hands. They're using their. I mean, after years, I have to imagine. You know, your hands get tired. Yes. Well, at first they can they can be very sore, but you're developing muscles that you never ever use for anything else when you're doing this. Uh, even I've had massage therapists who've had they've been massage therapists for years. And this is such a different technique that they sometimes have a challenge in learning how to do the thumb walk, which is what we do. We're walking with our thumbs and our fingers to stimulate the reflexes that are found all over the foot. Wow. I, I am blown away today by talking with you. I really am. I had, oh, that's nice. <laughs> I had, no, I'm serious. I had no idea how deep reflexology runs and how it can truly support. But most importantly can save lives. I had no idea. Yes. That's the thing. You've, you'll find a lot of foot spas out there yeah. that offer something they call reflexology, but you'll notice that most of them are not. They do foot rubs. Uh, and they, you know, they kind of mush-mush their shoulders, and then they kind of mush on the feet, and they're not properly trained. And what we've found in some cities, it's actually trafficking uh, of certain nationalities that um, there's, they sit down here, rub feet, and they don't even speak English. Right. And it's, it's, we've had to shut down a bunch of those places in Las Vegas, and then they pop right back up again. And Yeah, it's, it's, it's where I'm sitting right now in La Mesa, there is one of those little foot spas within uh, two miles of me in each direction. Sure. Yep. Know exactly what you're talking about. Um, mm-hmm. Is there any damage that can be done if somebody is massaging the foot but doesn't really know what they're doing? No, no. Unless they use really, really a heavy hand and bruise someone, right. that, that's going to happen whether they're a massage therapist or whatever. We, we learn how to work with the tissue in the foot at certain levels. And uh, no, I can't hurt, I can't hurt anybody. I, I, in 40-plus years, I've never had anyone with a negative response I've had responses, what we call health responses, where I worked with this one lady who walked very, very straight, ramrod straight, and I looked at her and thought, "Uh uh-oh, we've got some back issues here. Well, I started working on her feet in the lower lumbar area, which is all on on the bottom part of the arch. Um, She was going, that's really hurting. So I did very, very light, very light work. The next day she called me. She said her back hurt so badly. She said, what did you do to me? And I just, I knew exactly what was going on. Sometimes when the muscles are so tight and they've been that way for so long, you start waking those muscles up and they will hurt. Mm. And that can happen when we start to relax the body. Things start to wake up and they start to hurt. So they actually appear to get worse before they get better, but it's actually a good thing. So um, they're trained on what, what different results mean and different responses. Wow. One thing that's an eye-opener today, and those foot spas that you're referring to, are the ones that have a reflexology chart, uh, typically on the door, on the window, on the wall, Mm -hmm. and the perception is that they know what they're doing. Obviously, (laughs) they don't. Um, There comes in the training, which is what you offer at your facility. Tell us about that. Right. Well, and also, many, many of those charts are not correct. That's also something that we're very, when you and Unisingham developed the charts, the ones we're using today are the advanced level with a lot more uh, reflex areas on the, on the actual charts. And a lot of people buy them from the home office because they are the best charts on the planet. Um, and they, because it's just, it's so easy. The toes represent the head, if I can break it down for you. The toes represent the head. The ball of the foot relates to the chest and upper back area. The arch relates to the whole midriff area of your body, and the heel is like the part you sit on. And you've got the spinal, spinal reflexes going right down the arch of the foot on the inside, 
and you've got your arms and legs on the outside of the baby toe side of the foot. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, just, it's, a, it's a reiteration of the body on the foot. So when you see charts where you've got the stomach way up in the, in the um, lung area, you've got a chart that's not right. Or you've got one that puts the shoulder over on the, underneath the armpit, you, and, and, excuse me, the heart under the armpit. No, there's no heart under my armpit. So it you know, follows the regular body. And the, our classes, uh, like I said, I, I did them only from Le, San Diego or La Mesa now just because of the fact that my mom passed away six years ago. And it's, they're, they're difficult classes. They're difficult to do with just one person traveling. So people come to my home. The maximum is eight people, which is unbelievably different. When I used to do New York City, we had 300 people in the ballroom in New York City. I'd have 200 in New York or in, um, excuse me, in, in Pittsburgh. So eight people, I absolutely love it because I can work with each individual person as they go through their whole process. And we talk all the time. We get we do we do a voiceover, um, excuse me, um, Zoom calls. Um, I really work with my people now um, to make sure that they get to that certified area. Does that make sense? It really, really does. And you've made so much come clear today, busted a lot of misconceptions, really fortified how important our feet are and how they are truly, truly, truly connected to not just our body, but every part of our body. Um, Absolutely. Amazing. Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, Bobby, how do we find you? How do we connect if somebody is in the uh, San Diego area and would like to uh, talk to you about training? How do they do that? Well, um, actually, people come to my classes from all over the United States. Actually, I actually had a, a, a nun come from South Africa that came to my class in Los Angeles once years ago. So people come to, to get trained by me from all over. Part of it's because I've been doing this for most of my life, three-quarters of my life I've been doing this. So I know of what I speak. So they can go to my website, which is www.thefootladies, L-A-D-I-E-S, thefootladies.com. That's my website. And they can reach me, bobby at thefootladies.com. So that's, they can email me. They can um, go to my website. My phone number is also on there. And um, they can reach me several different ways. You are the foot lady. <laughs> there is, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I have learned so much in the last 30 minutes. Um, and just all of us, the misconceptions that are out there about reflexology. Thank you so much for being here today. Truly, I'm looking forward next time we get together. Thank you so much, Steve. I appreciate it very much. I appreciate you. We'll be right back. <laughs> Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. What I know about courage, I learned from my adoptive mom. She said sometimes you just gotta hold on and know we'll get through this. Mom, we are so high up. Hold my hand. (laughs) No, you hold my hand. Here we go. (laughs) Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. Visit AdoptUSKids.org to find out more. I learned patience from my adoptive dad. All he had to say was, Hey, you got this. Just breathe. (sighs) Hey, (laughs) we're pretty good. Yeah. (laughs) Might have to start a band. (laughs) I got it. Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. (laughs) Visit AdoptUSKids.org to find out more. This message is brought to you by AdoptUSKids, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and the Ad Council.